my dear lovely students now we stand for math class i am a friend teacher of class 3 from mammutpur branch welcome you all our math online class how are you all i hope all of you are fit and fine by the grace of almighty allah students you know that already we have finished our third term math syllabus and our revision class is going on and today we will revise short question answer okay my dear students i think short question answer is nothing new to you whenever we start any new chapter all the time we have discussed with you the basic information of this chapter so uh, if you learn this basic information from the chapter then i think you can give the right answer properly isn't it students and in third term we have already done fraction measurement chapter Uh, geometry chapter there are some uh, revision chapter also multiplication and division so if you read uh, learn or learn the basic information of this chapter then you can give the right answer okay now let's start the class i will show you today some short question answer from the short question answer sheet so everybody be attentive take out your cw copy pen book in front of you okay our today's topic is short question answer so at first i have written number 1 question for you that is what is the equivalent fraction of the fraction 3 by 5 so students can you remember from the fraction chapter already we have done it in in our class okay so equivalent fraction look at the word equivalent fraction what does it mean can you remember i told you before that equivalent fraction means that is same value of the fraction look there is 3 by 5 so i have to find out this fraction equivalent fraction by how can you remember how can we make it equivalent yes we have to multiply or divide and we have to multiply or divide the numerator and denominator both both part we have to multiply by the same number okay so can you guess what will be the answer 3 by 5 its equivalent fraction will be 3 to the what 6 and again i have to multiply 5 by the same number same times tables 2 5 to the will be what 10 so we got the answer here 6 by 10 this is the equivalent fraction of this fraction 3 by Five. Okay, students. Okay, go to the next number. Number two. The question is, in which quadrilateral opposite sides are equal and parallel? Be careful, students. Look at the word opposite. Already, I know. that you have some idea about the geometry chapter so can you give me the answer yes tell me what is the answer yes students in which quadrilateral opposite sides are equal and parallel the answer will be rectangle very good okay so i will show you again so i am writing here The answer will be rectangle. How it can be possible? I will show you now. 
my dear students uh, in our geometric class already you have get idea that how can we write the picture of rectangle the figure of rectangle we have to use the protector so can you remember the definition of rectangle yes a quadrilateral in which opposite sides are equal and every angle is right angle that is called rectangle can you remember the definition of rectangle from the previous lesson yes so they are telling you in which quadrilateral opposite sides are equal and parallel so already we have know from the definition the answer will be rectangle now i can uh, show you by drawing the picture i am writing uh, draw the picture of rectangle are in a right um, free hand but you have to try to draw it by the protector and by the scale look i have drawn a line here and you know rectangle has how many sides four sides isn't it students how many sides are there in rectangle and this is the opposite side this line opposite is this line this side also and this side opposite is this one can you remember the figure of rectangle okay so parallel means what can you remember the word parallel parallel means whenever we have to draw the figure of rectangle then what we have to do if i take it 10 inch then this parallel line and opposite side will be this one so i have to take this one 10 inch also and the, all the distance between these two line will be equal then it is called parallel i hope that all of you can remember from the geometric class already we have shown you properly but today i am uh, drawing the figure here in a right, uh, free hand to make you just understand about rectangle figure look this is the opposite this line opposite is this one and this line opposite is this line so from the definition also we can remember that there are uh, which quadrilateral lateral has the equal sides and every angle will be right angle right angle can you remember about the right angle right angle means every angle is 90 degree every angle is here is four angle and every angle is 90 degree there are four angle and rectangle has four side and four angle we have uh, already learned it from our geometry chapter so i think that you have the idea about rectangle so can you tell me now if i ask you the another question can you tell me in which quadrilateral has the same side and every angle is right angle can you tell me the name yes this quadrilateral name is square you know the square has uh, equal side in every side okay so but opposite whenever they are asking you about opposite sides are equal and parallel then you have to write the answer rect angle rectangle okay now students i am starting number 3 the question is which unit you will use to measure the length of a dome okay so can you tell the answer it is from the measurement chapter and they are asking about the length and they are asking about the unit. So, I hope that all of you can remember the unit of length measurement. The unit of length measurement is kilometer, meter, centimeter, millimeter. Okay. So, we will not use here the kilometer because kilometer always use uh, to express the distance of the place okay and centimeter i can also cannot write because centimeter and millimeter we have to use for the small thing but they are asking you which unit you will use to measure the length of a dough so 
the answer will be what? Meter. Isn't it students? Okay. The answer I have written here. Meter. Okay, now I am starting. Number 4. What is the numerator of fraction 7 by 80? So students, I think that already you have learned the parts of fraction. And can you tell me what is the called the below number of fraction? Yes, the below number of fraction is called denominator. Very good. And the upper number of fraction is called numerator. And this line between the numerator and denominator is called fraction bar. So, the question for you, what is the numerator of fraction? So, easily you can understand now that the upper number 7 is our numerator. I have shown you here one question, but you have to learn the definition, what is called uh, denominator, what is called numerator and what is called fraction bar. These basic things we have to learn. Now, go for the question number 5. What is the remainder 388 divided by 7? We have to find out the here remainder. Look student, they have given you the dividend, they have given you the divisor, but we don't know the quotient and remainder. So whenever we have to find out the remainder, obviously we will get the quotient also. Okay. Now for uh, this, we have to show the rougher to find out the answer. I am showing you here the rougher. How can I find out the remainder? 7 is our divisor and 388 is our dividend here. So can you remember the process of uh, division, the step of division? At first we have to uh, compare the digit. From the left side we have to start and this is left side first digit is 3. So 3 is smaller than this divisor. So we cannot take one digit. We have to take two digit together. That is will be 38. Now read out times table of 7. Well if there is 38 in 7 times table. Read with me. Okay. 7 zeros are 0. 7 ones are 7. 7 twos are 14. 7 threes are 21. I can write here also for to make you understand. 7 ones are 7. 7 twos are 14. 7 threes are 21. 7 fours are 7 fours will be 28. 7 fives are 35. 7 six are what? 7 six will be 42. So look students, which one will you take? You know, if it will not match up, so we have to take the nearest number. So 38 nearest number will be 35. You cannot take 42. So I will write here. 7 fives are 35. Okay. So now what do we have to do in the next step? I can erase this. Rougher. Okay. 7 fives are 35. Now you have to do the subtraction. 8 minus 5. What will be there? 3. And 3 minus 3. There will be nothing. What do we have to do now? We have to bring down this 8 here. So again it will be become 38. Now again what do I have to do? I have to read the 7 times civil again. And we know that 7 fives are 35. Okay. If I take 7 6 the 42 then it cannot be possible. Again what we have to do? We have to do the subtraction here. Look, 8 minus 5, what will be there? 3. After doing the subtraction, we got 3 here and 3 minus 3, there will be nothing. So, after doing the subtraction, we got the remainder here, 3. This is our remainder. You know, the leftover number, after doing the subtraction, that is called 
remainder. So our answer we got here three. Three is our answer. So I am writing here answer three. Okay, students, have you understood? Okay, students, now I am starting number six. The question is if one hour equals to sixty minutes. How many minutes will be there in one day? So students, be attentive. Look at the board. I am telling that they are telling you one hour equals to sixty minutes. All of you, I think you know these things. That one hour means sixty minutes. So what do we have to find out here? We have to find out how many minutes. How many minutes we have to find out in that. Question and minutes it what in one day. So all of you you know that one day means how many hour? Yes, students. To find out the minutes, we have to know that one day means how many hour? One day is equal to twenty four hours. And they are telling you one hour equal to sixty minutes. And now we have to find out that twenty-four hours, how many minutes will be there? So we have to find out here the more minute. And as we have to find out here the more minutes, what we have to do here? You know, whenever the uh, they are telling about the increase number, they are telling about the more number. We have to do here what? We have to do their addition. But if we do here the addition, it will uh, take more time. And there is a another easiest way. By this way, we can easily find out the answer. Can you guess? Yes, that is multiplication. The multiplication is the method easiest than addition. But both of case we have to find out the more and increase number so we can do here the multiplication to find out the answer that is how many minutes will be there in one day okay students so what do we have to do here i will show here the rapport to find out the answer because you know we have to find out the minutes and they are telling you one hour equals to 60 minutes and we have to find out how many minutes will be there in one day and you know day is bigger than hour and hour is bigger than minute and we have to find out here the more minutes okay more minutes and we know as we know that one day equal to 24 hours so 24 hours easily we can understand there will be more minutes and if we have to find out the more minutes, we have to do the addition or multiplication. But we will choose the multiplication here uh, to find out the answer. So I can write here 60 minutes and now I am doing the multiplication. Okay. So do the multiplication, you know. 4 zeros will be what? 0. And 4 6 will be what? 4 6 are? 4 zeros are 0, 4 1s are 4, 4 2s are 8, 4 3s are what? 12, 4 4s are 16, 4 5s are 20, and 4 6s are, yes, students, you are right, 24. Now go to the next step. Next step we will start, you know the tens place. So 2 zeros will be 0, and 2 6s will be what? 12, yes. Now we have to do the Addition here, so it will be 0, 4, here is the 2 plus 2 will be what? 4 and 1 will be there. So we got the answer 1440 minutes. Have you seen students? Okay. So I have written here after doing the rapport, got the answer 1440 minutes in one day. But one day we have to think that is 24 hours. Okay. We have to apply the formula that one day means 24.
4 hours. That's why I have uh, multiplication here by 24 hours. 60 is our multiplicand, 24 is our multiplier here. Okay. So I am going to start the next. All of you look at the board. Number 7. What do you say? 12 midnight to 11.59 no. This is the question. So students, I know already you know the answer. Uh, you all, Usually we use this word in our daily life that 12 in the midnight we called it AM. 12 AM and whenever it is before 12 noon we have to tell it AM. But whenever it cross um, 12 noon then we have to use the word PM. But it is the short form of the word. You have to know the large form that what do you say 12 midnight to 11.59 noon. So what will be the answer? We know the answer that is called anti-meridian. Okay. Anti-meridian. This anti-meridian short form is what? Already we know it AM. A is for anti and M is for meridian. So like this way we can easily understand PM means what? Can you remember? PM means PM is post meridian. Okay. So this is the number 7. I told that you have to know what do you say 12 midnight to 11.59 noon. That is called anti meridian. And short from already we have used in our daily life all the time. But we have to know the large uh, word, large form of AM. AM means what? We have to learn this. Okay. Now I am starting question number 8. How many months are there in a 3 years? So students, what we have to find out here? We have to find out here months. So as we know that 1 year there are 12 months. So we have to find out here 3 years how many total months are there. So we have to find out more months. So what we have to do here? We have to do here the multiplication because they are asking you 3 years. Okay. 3 years how many months are there. So as we know that the one year, twelve months. So easily we can find out three years. How many months are there? By doing the multiplication, we can find out the answer. I am showing here the rough work. Look, three twos will be what? Six, and three ones are three. So we got the answer. Thirty-six months. Thirty-six months is our answer. In three years, there are thirty-six months. Okay, students. Now look at the question number 9. How many arms are there in a quadrilateral? You know student what does quadrilateral mean? Okay. A shape that is enclosed by four straight lines that is called quadrilateral. And there are many types of quadrilateral like rectangle, square, parallelogram. Okay. So you know we have to find out here the arms. Arms means what? Arms means you know that a quadrilateral has four sides. Isn't it students? And side and arms is the same meaning. So how many sides in a quadrilateral are there? We know that there are four sides in a quadrilateral. So there are answer will be what here? They are asking you how many arms are there in a quarter. So, we, as we know, there are four sides. So, it is the same meaning arms and quadrilateral. So, I can write here four arms. Okay, students. Now, I am going to number 10. 
how many centimeter make a meter how many centimeter make a meter my dear students can you remember some formula we have given in the class that uh, how many kilometer equal to meter and then how many meter like this way okay so how many centimeter make a meter you know meter is greater than centimeter okay so how many centimeter make a meter 1000 can you remember from the formula no students the answer will be what 100 centimeter make a meter you have to learn the formula properly okay 100 centimeter we need this formula whenever we will do the problem okay so without the formula our answer will be wrong so our answer will be what how many centimeter make a meter 100 centimeter make 1 meter a means 1 meter okay so students i think that all of you have understood properly about the short question answer so i am writing the diary now okay all of you take out your diary your diary is now learn the short question answer okay students learn the short question answer so students i know that after few months you will go to the next class so best wishes for all of you. See you next time. No more today. Bye bye.